The last video I made was uh, on kickback and I made that one longer and more involved so I figured it was a better fit on my bigger channel so if you want to check that one out if you haven't seen it already the link to that is in the description. In that video I got a comment about cross cutting on the table saw using this thing right here. This is the miter guide that comes with nearly every saw and that rides in your miter slot like so. I don't use mine so it's quite dusty and it doesn't slide very well for some reason. Not in that slot. But this is an old saw and the miter slots are a little bit beat up so I'll try it over here. This slides through here. The question had to do with cross cutting and it was to the effect that, okay, I got it in. He knows that you, you shouldn't be doing this kind of thing right here. Cross cutting like this, using the fence as your stop block and sliding that through the blade. That causes a kickback right there with the piece that comes off. Now granted, the kickback that results from cutting a thin piece like this is not very menacing looking, but Usually it's not the kickback itself that can cause a problem. It's the, your reaction to it. Sometimes you'll, you know, stumble backwards and trip over something or something like that. And that can do as much damage as the blade or the kickback can. Also, if you make a cut on a larger piece, like a piece of two by four, that can seriously injure you if it gets jammed between the blade and the fence. What he didn't, understand was why you shouldn't use it over here and use the fence in the same way as a stop block to make your cut. Now I didn't answer that directly because I thought it would make an interesting video and really when you look at it it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference say if you have a sled with a stop set up as long as you're holding the piece you should be okay but it does increase the risk of kickback because you have a piece between the blade that's spinning and the fence which doesn't move so as you can see it's basically exactly the same situation you have a stop block that stops the wood from you know going that way and the blade is spinning so you still have a kickback situation the only difference is with both is that you're able to hold a piece solidly in place and that's you know the crux of it right there it's controlling the work so that it can't move while you're making the cut but you know people see this cut here they will say that's fine they won't even remark on it but if they see the other cut with the fence they'll say oh that's dangerous you know with the miter guide and the and the fence is dangerous when they're exactly the same thing now in a number of my videos I have used a sled or some other means to cut off pieces of the same length and what I've done is I've not used the stop block because I really don't like using them I don't like to have any kind of a situation where unless I can avoid it or unless it's too inconvenient. Like if I have 100 pieces to cut this length, I will set up a stop block to do it because it's more convenient for that and I can pay attention to what I'm doing. But if I've only got like four or five to do, I'll just make a mark right here on the sled, slide this over to where it needs to be. And that way I don't have to worry about it. I can hold one hand, push the fence, uh, the sled <laughs> through the cut and move on to the next piece. I don't have to mess around with a stop block or anything like that. And that is the safest way to make a cut. You always want to make your cuts so that they, the off cut or the piece that's being cut can't jam between the fence and the blade. You are uh, interested in fashions, harmonica? I saw three of these dusters a short time ago. They were waiting for a train. Inside the dusters, there were three men. So? Inside the men, there were three bullets. <laughs> That's a crazy story, Harmonica. 